Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this chat about changing paradigms post um, 2020. We are in a challenging place globally and importantly as Nigerians. And at, at the end of the day, it's important that we look at what our world will be um, after um, this year. But before we go into what I think discourse around changing paradigms, I wanted us to probably reflect on what a paradigm is. Um, a paradigm is, is a set of rules, um, a system of assumptions that guide how a person views reality. So a paradigm is not necessarily right or wrong. They're just those things that we have been conditioned to believe that fundamentally shape our perception of reality. Um, as business leaders, you're trained and, and, and told that if you do X plus Y, the outcomes will probably be Z. So your paradigm defines who you are. It tells you, it shapes what you hold there, what's important to you. So for instance, in some religions, it's believed that if you give, the fundamental belief that if you give, you will be pleasing God. And at this time of today where people are celebrating um, Good Friday, there are some people who believe that you must do X, Y, Z um, to be closer to your creator. And this paradigm shape our belief system. So if somebody does something contrary to what you believe, oftentimes your, your thinking around him is shaped by that and you think, oh, he's not doing the right thing or he's doing the wrong thing. Paradigms also help us define what we think is right or wrong. Our fundamental beliefs, how we shape our mind, define what we think is good or, or evil, what is right or wrong. Your paradigm somehow is defines um, what your correct business practice is. So if you're in the management or marketing space, we always talk about, look, we truly believe that we can grow, something as mundane as we can grow profitability by driving revenues and reducing costs. The only thing is that all that work within the confines or constraints of, you know, all things being equal. I used to have a, a math teacher in a university who would always say, well, we always think one plus one is two. But they always said to us that one plus one isn't two. It's only two if you're looking at it from a base 10. If you change the dynamics and do one plus one from a base two, the answer isn't two. And so our paradigms believe that, look, Within these frameworks we define for ourselves, X plus Y will be equal to Z. Sometimes people have this paradigm that think that, look, our worldview is if I did this course, I have a good chance to get a job. And your paradigms are often built around what your history, what you know, what you've come from, what you've been taught, um, your religion, and what you see has happened over and over again. So it gives you a bit of predictability that says, if I did X, Y, Z, this will happen. Um, your paradigm sometimes define what you expect from people. So when you go into a business meeting, for instance, in the West, it's expected that you shake your hands, you stretch out your hands. And the firmer it is, some people say you're a strong leader. Um, people expect that, look, you're going for an interview and you're dressed in the particular way. Because in that framework, if you dress this way, it means that, look, you understand the importance of this and you take it important. These paradigms shape us because as human beings, we are, we are designed to work within a framework of predictability. It helps us know what we've done, look at history and build on the future. The problem is that the last four months of the year, Everything we hold there has changed. Those paradigms, those belief sets, those things we assumed would always happen have been challenged. Um, we, many years ago, um, about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I started uh, my career, we talked about an interconnected world where every business was striving to grow out of its own 
um, I'll call it comfort zone of or out of his own country of origin, but expands. So becoming international, becoming multinational, driving um, inclusivity in, ter- in the workplace in terms of race, creed, color, sex was important for us because we believe that the world would evolve to a place where we all become one. That became a fundamental paradigm that shaped the way business was done. We truly believed. And in fact, I used to think about Coca-Cola many years ago in, in the World Cup, I think 2020 World Cup, you know, the Roger Miller dance song, and it, it, it talked about bringing people together. I'm the future of the world, bringing people together. Brands and companies invested time, invested their resources, invested their knowledge sets to try to define a business world that was all inclusive that brought us together. So one paradigm that was there pre-2020 was that we're going to grow into a world that was truly interconnected and live together. Social integration was what we believed was the way to go. And that's interesting. That was one paradigm and defined how business would run. On the paradigm that up till March this year would say was very impossible was for the world to shut down. Today, I was reading the statistics as at last week, Friday, over half of the world was on lockdown. If somebody had told us on January 1st, 2020, that it was remotely possible that of the 195 countries plus, about 195 countries in the world, nearly 100 would be on lockdown and over half of the world population would be not moving, we'll say that is not possible. The world cannot shut down. International travels cannot stop. Um, America cannot struggle with a pandemic that, look, other places have dealt with. Um, if I look at Nigeria, okay, our presidents, our governors um, cannot be sick and seek for treatment within Nigeria. Um, the funniest one is always when you look at people two, three weeks ago, everybody rushing to come back from the West to Africa because everybody believed that look we're better home than in the West. So those things that we we held there, I mean somebody this joke they cracked that people now nobody says I just returned from Italy or I just returned from the US. Because once you say that people distance start distancing from you. Um a couple of years ago, a couple of months ago, if you traveled and came back, oh I where are you from? Oh I just returned from the UK or the US and uh, you know people start asking no oh, what did you come with? So those things that have defined us have fundamentally changed. So in the last four months, our entire system of operation, our entire system of being has changed. We in Africa, for instance, had always had the paradigm that we, we, we look after our own. You see your neighbor, you see, you say, hi, how are you? Good morning. We hug. You, in weddings, you embrace. You have a wedding, you get a thousand people come in, you invite 200, 1,000 rock up and you're there to provide food for them. Our worldview that shaped us or that we way, a wedding is where you bring family together. A funeral is where you bring family together. So every one of us were built together. Everything about us became one. Well, truth be told, that has changed. And it's interesting because, again, nobody, none of us, could forecast this happening. And in this radical change that we cannot think about, what comes to mind is, so how does the world post this challenge look like? How does Nigeria post this year? What would it look like? How would businesses look like? And what would define those markers that drive us to succeed in 2020 and beyond because today everything we know and everything we hold there is being on a daily basis challenge and everything we believe is how it ought to be probably isn't what it ought to isn't how it is today so our first challenge will be to identify those things those fundamental things that have changed and then from my point of view my thoughts around how the future will evolve um, one of the things that struck, uh, two big things that have struck me in this whole four months of 2020 
is one our levels of self-preservation. I, I didn't believe that any time in our existence that families, brothers and sisters will lose a loved one and people will be okay not to assemble or congregate to go bury the person because we're afraid that, look, if we come together, we will catch this sickness on the other one. The, the first four months of 2020 has taught us that those things we hold, they can change with the snap of a finger. And think about something as distinct as the levels of our self-awareness and preservation has shocked me. But the reality tells me that, look, that is our new reality. In spite of this self-preservation, I won't shake you. I'll cover my mouth. I won't come for any party. Something has also dialed up in this crisis or where we find ourselves. And that's the humanitarian spirit in a lot of people. Because while we are now insular, a lot of people are insular. You're comfortable in your home, in your house, it's okay. A lot of people have also started to open up their hearts to helping those less privileged around them. So while they do not go out and do it physically, people are committing their resources to improve the lives of people around them. So while the first four months in the world has given us a new worldview on me, myself, and I, out of it has also come a view that, look, you know what? I can't go this, I can't do this alone. We need to help people. So there are contending forces that we are more insular, but we are more helpful. And that probably will define how the world progresses um, going forward. Businesses have, you know, shut down completely. Um, I saw a joke the other day where many years ago, if you if you went into a bank with a bandana, not uh, one four months ago, five months ago, if you went to a US bank with a bandana covering your nose and eye, you probably arrested or shot. Today, if you go to a bank without covering your nose and mouth, people are running away from me and wondering what's wrong with you. Things have changed. Businesses have been caught up in a perfect storm that they cannot understand. So we were brought up to look at history, look at the past, look at the environmental changes and project or predict what the future would hold. Well, 2020 has taught us that, look, um, events that can fundamentally change everything around us has happened and we could not see nobody, neither the political, the spiritual, the business leaders, the professors could see the changes that have affected and changed the world in four months and change the world's behavior. Not just changing the world, but fundamentally change everything about the way we are. In academics or academia, they'll call it Black Swan events. And these are unpredictable events that happen um, not random, not, not in a sequential manner, they happen, and, uh, happen randomly. The reality is that our world of today will be filled with black, black swan events. The frequency of these events would happen. The problem is we cannot forecast or predict the inputs into those events, but more importantly, the outputs of those events we cannot predict. Therein lies a problem for us as business leaders, as political leaders, as spiritual leaders. What do you do when you, you do not see when the perfect storms are coming together, but more importantly, by God, you don't know what the outcomes on our boat will be. It, it redefines those paradigms that lead, that shape, that guides us. My first principle in terms of what I think, and I thought of this a lot, is that everything we hold dear, we must challenge. That's anything. So all those um, things that shape our belief systems, our outcomes, those things we think are impossible, fundamentally, we must allow to be questioned. You know, my where I come from, they say you don't teach an old dog new tricks, or you don't you don't learn to use your left hand in old age. 
which basically means that, look, fundamentally, as you grow very old, there's some things you've learned that won't change because you know it. It's, it's happened. My forefathers did it. My father did it. I will do it. And I expect the same outcomes. Well, guys, watching me today, I'll say this. That ain't true. That's changing. That's not the world of today. The world of today is built around those uncertainties. Not just uncertainties like we talk about the management. Look, you plan for uncertainties. You're flexible. You're malleable. You're... No. These are uncertainties that you cannot predict. And I promise you, you have no clue as to where it leads you to. So how do you deal with it? The first thing you do with my learning is, first of all, you survive. You know, I've, I've, I've read so many things online, people talking about, oh, learn something new this period, blah, 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 blah. That's great if you can. But the first things in uncertainty, the first things where the building blocks that have guided you are torn to pieces, the first things you do when you don't know what is happening today and what will happen tomorrow is learn to survive any way you can. What works for me, Dr. Nyeka Chionobogu, may not work for you. But at the end of the day, within the frameworks and confines we find ourselves, the first principles is do what we must to survive. This applies to business, this applies to government, this applies to churches, this applies to schools, this applies to anything you do as a family. The first thing is, how do I survive? And one thing this crisis has taught us you don't need a lot to survive, actually. When you sit at home and you have so much money and you can't spend it because you can't go out and shop, or you go to the shops and the shelves are empty, or you can't drive out because you're afraid that, look, the police will, will get you, you fundamentally realize that the needs you have are much smaller than what we think they are. And what you need the most at times like this is people close people family whatever you call it so the first principles for us is you have to survive and however you do it within the confines of the law is survive so you plan better in terms of your health you live better in terms of exercise if you're on drugs you make sure you have enough supply of drugs at every point in time so that you don't run out of your medication and, and, and die because you don't know if you get not get it. But you survive. The next thing about crack, about about managing this change in our paradigms and changing what we hold dear and the framework which we operate is that the demand for leadership becomes increasingly important. For the first time in Africa in general, especially in this our country, Nigeria, we have very little demand from political leadership. And the reason is simple. We all feel well, whether we vote them or not, they're getting the power. And since they truly don't care about us, it doesn't matter. But what has changed in the last four months is that people are afraid. People do not understand what will happen tomorrow. So people are looking up to leaders for guidance, for comfort, for hope. And these things will happen, be it for political leadership, or religious leadership, or business leadership, or indeed family leadership. People expect that the leader creates an, an atmosphere that drives comfort, that creates a bit of stability, but that gives hope that the future However, it plays out. Even if we don't know how to play out, we will get through it. At times of uncertainty, we need hope because we are built as people to drive a framework that allows us to walk through. And when we can't do it, when the challenges are too much, when the distractions are too much, we need to survive and we need hope to keep going on. The second point, as business led, like I've said before, is the point around allow yourself to be challenged on everything you know. Because those things you thought were sacrosanct, those things you thought couldn't change. The one plus one that you assume will always be two in the last four months has shown us it can be anything. And if we're going to survive in a world that we cannot predict, 
or forecast or model. Then we must be open to listen, to hear, and to change our views on a lot of things, whatever they are. As you grow older, you're set in your ways. Survival in a world that all your paradigms are changing goes contrary to being set in your ways. It means that you're amenable to throw away those things that you hold there and understand what you should deliver. Is. Leadership that gives hope is important and that's why my fear and I, we're all in the same boat where you're looking at your businesses and saying, look, we can't make money. If we can't make money, what do we do? We lay off people. We, like in the US, the world, world in the US, we follow people. Um, and that's fine. But even in doing that, do that with a sense that you have to give people hope that tomorrow could and would be better than today. And if it can be better than today, then there's a the hope for the future. Um, in, a, in Nigeria, a case is a bit more complex because you're, there's the issue we have globally overlaid with the challenges we have, economic challenges. So you have low oil prices, you have um, hunger, we call it, we, you have loss of jobs, you have a crisis where leadership doesn't really understand what to do. So people are jumping headlong to try to solve a problem that they're not even sure what to do, but want to be seen to be doing something. It creates another perfect storm that post the health challenges that we see today will erupt in future. Governments are doing bailouts. Governments are spending money on intervention programs. Um, the reality is a lot of what we do today is mortgaging the future. Because we're paying, you say paying forward, I don't know, paying back. We're paying, we're taking money from the future and the future of our kids to keep us alive today. And I understand that. I understand that. But also we need to understand as business leaders and people that something is going to give in that future. And so as we plan our lives today to survive and plan, understand that the future post-2020 will be a fundamentally different world in terms of the economies, in terms of economics, in terms of how the world works. Uh, one of the things that surprised me is the well, the dependence on technology. You know, the last four months accelerated our adoption of technology more than in any time in history. So everybody is doing Zoom meetings. That's why my internet connections have been up and down today. People are refusing to travel because people are understanding that, look, I don't need to travel. Board meetings are being held today in, in electronically. Schools are being taught today, um, e-learning. From, I'm talking about from nursery school to university. Churches and mosques are having services online. Good Friday service for most of us was online service. The challenges of 2020 will come and go, but the learnings of 2020 will never leave us. So those things we hold there that on a Good Friday service, we have to go to church and do our session on the cross. The truth is, going forward, that has fundamentally changed. So our world is changing. And as people, as individuals, you must change it. Our world is going to become a more individualistic society where we first think of ourselves. In the Western world, they have adopted it. In Africa, it's been different for us because we come from a world of Ubuntu. One for all, all for one. A world that takes care of each other. Well, the truth is, post-2020, that world will go with it. So we're going to see a lot more individualism, but a lot more altruism. So we'll be individualists, like I said, but we'll give out a lot more. We're going to see businesses that have to shape their entire business model because any business that does not provide real value to the customer or consumer will fail. Because post-2020, 
governments and people will not have money to pay for crap. Post-2020, the demand for value for every dollar we spend, for every naira we spend, will be even more. Post-2020, jobs will go in 2020. Livelihoods will be lost, will, will be lost in 2020. 2020 after 2020 will be time of recovery. And in times of recovery, it's about survival. It's about making the best of where I find myself. So any business, any business that does not fundamentally offer the best values will suffer. School and schooling will change. I told somebody I have a PTA meeting tomorrow and I said to them, look, you know what? The concept of every time I collect school fees like I like, it's going to change because fundamentally people will ask. It will open up. I mean, schools are doing online learning today, but what you're seeing that if you go online, they are creating a lot of platforms that can teach your kids what their school online platform will teach them. The question is going forward in 2020, would I need to send my kid to that school? Or can I have online, distant learning, open learning schools online? I think that will define what we do. Every business that cannot survive underpinned by a technology platform will struggle. I thought about my friends in the um, in the BTL below the line activation space, and I keep saying, look, the world has changed. Because unlike before, where you gather people and do activations in the market, talk to fighters would running around and dancing, blah 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 blah. That's not gonna happen this time around. Because people will be afraid to congregate. The impact on sports will be phenomenal. The days of paying people a hundred million pounds to buy them because everybody wants to see them will change. It will change because revenues from stadiums or stadia will reduce. It will change because people will fundamentally ask the question, why do I pay this man this amount of money? It will change because people will come out less to to, to watch those sports in the stadium, they wear less of their sports branded gear. So the revenues to these big sports clubs and stuff will reduce. And so players, their managers and the like will need to take less monies to probably play in empty stadiums or box without anybody watching. Of course, people like Netflix and the rest of them will make a lot of money because what you're going to do is technology, internet use, bandwidth will have to expand fundamentally to take care of our new world. There's been discuss, this big discourse about the new, I don't want to go into it because I you know, had a 5G and whatever. You know, I said, well, the world of tomorrow will depend on the speed of our connectivity online because we're going to we've moved physical connectivity physical interactions to digital and online connectivity as long as the offers is, is a solution that allows you connect even faster and integrate even more um we can't run away from it you can scream and shout from today till thy kingdom come the man who will win is a man who can connect you to all your consumers quicker simpler easier without any buffering the man who will do that the business that can do that are the businesses that can win post 2020 we're going to be a more individualistic set of people our social construct will change and that for me is what scares me the most our belief systems Especially in this part of the world that are built around family, built around interaction, built around celebrations, will change. It's sad that now, you know, people lose loved ones and are okay to not gaga, congregate to bury them. There are positives on that because it reduces costs. But the negative is that it impacts on what makes us who we are. But like I said earlier, 
in a world that is changing in an unpredictable world, what we need to do is to first of all accept that everything we hold dear will change. Open ourselves up to take it there as it comes. And all the theories who have exp expanded every day, all these theories about what you should do, what you must do, how you must do it, I respect them. But my belief is that if nobody could forecast the Black Swan event of this last four months, all those theories, they are great. When the mathematical 63 is parables, when all things are equal, the world of post 2020 is a world where all things will not and never be equal. People talk of a new world order, maybe. People talk of a change in, you know, whatever it is, maybe. One thing I'm certain is that the world of 2020, post 2020, will be a fundamentally different world for all of us than 2019. The good thing is we will thrive, we will survive, we will grow. But that would fundamentally happen um, when as leaders, and I mean leaders across all spheres, we open to change and we give hope. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing we can live with. The hope for a better tomorrow. The openness to change our belief systems. Ears that are wide enough to say, okay, like antennas, where is it happening? And shaping our business model to work with technology. And of course, buying the fastest internet band with space you can get. Because without that, we are nowhere. Um, governments, if anybody in government is listening to me, um, a lot will be demanded of you. Your days of accountability have just started. Because when people have lost a lot and potentially will keep losing a lot, they will hold you accountable for all the promises you've given them. So well, I want to stop here. Um, people have asked me a lot of questions and I think it's quite interesting. We're in interesting times. We're in, we're in the new world. We're, we're living in times that will shape the future of our kids and our children's children. We're living in interesting times. In Chinese say, may, we, may you not live in interesting times, but we are living in interesting times. But I know that if each one of us understands that those things are holding, I keep saying it, will change and focus our energies on becoming that sponge that listens and learns and doesn't say, this is how we do it. Then every day, it will chart that course that makes us live, thrive, survive, and become better. Societies will change. Our belief systems will change. What holds us together will change. Our social constructs, particularly as Africans, will change. Our demands from government and from leadership will change. Our fears will heighten. Uncertainties will continue. But you know what? This is what God has made us to be. And through it all, we will come out stronger, more resilient, and I think happier people. I'll stop here and say thank you for listening. Sorry for the internet ups and downs. That's one of the challenges of technology. And hopefully, in a short while, we'll have bandwidth that can carry our messages um, through and through. Thank you all. I remain Dr. Kachi Onobogu. God bless us all. Thank you and God bless.